This video is in continuation to the last one for BA second year students paper titled Knowledge and Curriculum. This is part 3. The topic we are going to study today is knowing. Knowing is both a process and a product. As a process, it refers to the method of coming to know the phenomena. Knowledge as a product is resultant of knowing the process. Knowing happens through perception, reason and emotion. Take a minute to list some differences between knowledge and knowing. Hoping you've got some of these right. Knowledge is the plain theory and knowing is the practical experience. Secondly, knowledge is an intellectual process while knowing is a spiritual or emotional process. Lastly, knowledge comes from acquiring information while knowing comes from ownership. Let's discuss the various ways of knowing. The first one is language. It is a system of signs with meaning to deliver a message. These signs include but are not limited to letters, pictures, symbols, sounds and gestures. Language is everywhere and it is really important for communicating knowledge. The second one is sense perception. It is a process by which we can gain knowledge about the outside world. The third one is emotion. There are two important views of emotion that tend to come up in theory of knowledge. Naturalistic view and the social constructionist view. The first one supported by Charles Darwin tells us that emotion is a result of our physical bodies with physical cause and effect while the opposite of this is social constructionist view. The fourth way of knowing is reason, which allows us to go beyond the immediate experience of our senses. The fifth one is imagination, associated with imagery and making a mental image of something. It is viewed in a broader way as being associated with creativity, problem solving and originality as well. The sixth way of knowing is faith which can be seen as a commitment to a particular interpretation of experience and reality. The seventh one is intuition. I believe we have already discussed this before. And the eighth one is memory, which is the ability to retain information. And as a habit, it has a strong link to procedural knowledge and remembering how to perform actions. Let's discuss the various patterns of knowledge now. There are four major patterns. Empiric knowing, ethical knowing, personal knowing and aesthetic knowing. Empiric knowing is based on the assumption that what is known is accessible through the physical senses, particularly seeing, touching and hearing. While ethical knowing involves making moment to moment judgments about what ought to be done, what is good, what is right and what is responsible. Personal knowing concerns the inner experience of becoming a holistic, authentic self capable of unifying the plural dimensions in which that self lives in an honest and open manner. Lastly, aesthetic knowing involves deep appreciation of the meaning of a situation and calls forth inner creative resources that transform experience into what is not yet real, bringing to reality something that would not otherwise be possible. Developing knowledge patterns is critical to all levels of education. Knowledge acquisition, comprehension and application together with the skills of integration, analysis and synthesis essential for a well-prepared graduate are threaded through the patterns of knowing. Learning these essential skills and abilities through the framework of patterns of knowing will achieve the desired outcomes. Now we are going to discuss the relative roles of the knower and the known in knowledge transmission and construction. Broadly, there are going to be six roles of a teacher in knowledge transmission and construction. The first one is teacher as a transmitter of knowledge will act as an explorer, as a guide, as a lecturer, as a scholar and as a speaker. Secondly, teacher as a role model would act as an observer, consultant, designer and reviewer. 
teacher as a facilitator is going to be a learning facilitator and enricher content creator and a facilitator of understanding while fourthly teacher as a negotiator will be negotiating with students between students with parents and with other professionals teacher as a co-learner will act in learning and creativity assessment and digital age skills teacher as a manager will act as an organizer as a resource handler and as a controller these were the six points and now we are going to discuss role of known that is the learner in knowledge transmission and construction there are eight overall points let's discuss them the first one is the role of known that is the role of learner as an apprentice firstly learners are engaged actively in learning they develop knowledge of a field by working in it under the direction of an expert thus they act as an apprentice secondly learner has a role to act as a builder as well they construct the knowledge products designed into an activity by the instructor the products could be discrete that is the form of diagram or essay or collective thirdly they act as a case study worker and as content explorers they also act as independent researchers listeners peer mentors and peer teachers if you have any doubts please feel free to contact us we will study in detail in the next video